Kevin Kadichi. You, oh, what are you checking? Sorry? Okay, you dropped it. You are a ninja. You made some noise. I did. Talk to me in your fast, fun, serious, intense way. Okay. Yes. So. Kickstarter. Kickstarter. So Monday, yes. we launched The Forgotten King, which is a new starting point for Super Dungeon Explorer collectors, people who are already playing, and anybody who wants to get into it. Um, we simply have one pledge level, and that's to get in and get the game. A lot of cool stuff we're giving away. What we're doing is uh, the Forgotten King is kind of a new place for Super Dungeon players to get involved, which not only gives them the classic mode of playing the game, but also what we call arcade mode, which is a fully cooperative gameplay experience. It means that nobody has to play the dungeon if they don't want to. So it's going to be a card-driven game. Buckets of brand new models, all from the best stuff that we have to offer. Uh -huh. Funny, all of them cool and collectible. Um, some really, really, really great offers going on the Kickstarter with some premium figures that we're um, that we're putting out as we just blow through stretch goal after stretch goal. We're really, really excited. There's a lot of enthusiasm. Uh -huh. who, who was I just uh, struggling with? What squirrel? Uh, these are actually our rabbit squirrels. Uh, we're, yes. We're adding new model types to the game, and one of the model types we're adding are creeps. And creeps, different from the other monster minions, <coughs> actually belong to the boards themselves. So depending on the boards that you play on, you might have different kinds of monsters launching themselves out of the shadows at your heroes everywhere you go. And these look just phenomenal. Uh, I didn't. Get, I've never done Super Dungeon Explorer. What's what's my price point to enter for your Kickstarter? The main box game and the price point for the Kickstarter is is, is, is an even hundred bucks. It's going to get you a box um, product. It's going to get you a bunch of special models, a lot of additional content, and again, we're unlocking stuff all the time. Okay. Uh, where are you at right now? Uh, right On now, Thursday. We're nearing up three hundred thousand dollars after our first three days running this thing. So we're we're going really really quick. And you're also going independent. Tell tell me about that. We are going independent. So Soda Pop Miniatures and Ninja Division. Ninja Division is like the publishing entity for Soda Pop, as well as our partners, Cypher Studios, makers of El Dorado and Anima Tactics. So this is kind of um, a launching point for us to get out on our own two feet and be able to publish and make product for you guys. So that's really what we're excited about doing. Okay. Uh, and in fact, you have some new stuff for Relic Knights. We do have new stuff for Relic Knights. Yeah. Everybody's been dying to see what we've been working on. And we've had a little bit of delay getting this product ready, but we do have Relic Knights yeah, coming this summer for all of our backers. Yeah. So Relic Knights is an anime-themed skirmish battle game, which is fully done as a plastic range that we kickstarted a little over a year ago. The models are fantastic, the contents are great, the starter boxes are inexpensive and easy to get people into playing the game, and we got a lot of great figures coming out for the range. Inexpensive, you say? Inexpensive. Tell us about that. Um, we want to keep our starter boxes at about 50 bucks. It's a great buy-in. It gives you all the rules, tokens, dice, cards, everything you need to play one faction of guys. So for two people to buy in for 100 bucks, you have enough stuff to play with. And then after that, you can add models on as you want to, but you know, we're not going to try to drink so. Can we open this case? We can open Because I'm so special. What can I take out for you? Uh, let's just uh, spin some of these models around. Sure. You, you are giving me the star treatment. You are... Indeed. You so, are a gentleman. So one example out of the starter box of our uh, Star Nebula Corsairs, or our Space Pirates, is one of their big space cannons. He's a kind of a cool figure here. Launches big beams of energy across the table, blowing guys in half. Good, good fun. Um, you're going to get a whole crew of the uh, Broadside Border Pirates. There's going to be five of those guys in the kit, as well as your questing knight, Captain Harker, because, you know, space pirates are cool. Yes, and every every questing knight has a familiar, is that right? That's correct, and Captain Harker has his questing knight, Caesar. Okay. And uh, what do they do in the game? I'm sorry? What, what do those do in the game? What, what are these little familiars? I've jumped ahead of you, but right. what, what do these familiars do? So, so ciphers are like uh, magical nodes for your faction leaders. What makes them special in this game is that it's only a knight or a relic knight that can lead one of your faction forces. And so this, the faction ciphers are characters that are bonded, if you will, to your heroic leader. They're going to give them additional powers and abilities, the opportunity to um, uh, collect and spend and move around energy on the table so you can get more powerful actions off, get some other cool effects in the gameplay, um, and really interact with the table. Ciphers themselves can't actually be destroyed. Um, Sorry, you were saying before a very mysterious and exciting package arrived. Yes, before my mysterious package arrived. Um, yes. We were talking about ciphers and sort of their interaction with the game. The ciphers themselves can't actually be destroyed. They are functional parts of and you know represent part of the uh, the um, what do you want to call it the uh, the character of the knight itself. Uh -huh. And so.
So in order to remove a cipher from the game, you're going to have to remove his, his corresponding knight. Now, the, what's the kind of exciting about these buildings here is that they're made from... <laughs> so, uh, hey, I love terrain. So you, a, you, a trip down to the container store, a little bit of masking and some plastic art. Yeah, no, yeah. these are just, just hard acrylic colored cases um, yes. that, uh, that my partner Dietrich put together as little uh, um, uh, science fiction habs. And uh, after we launch Relic Nights, uh, we have a couple hobby articles we're going to put out on how to make these. They're super inexpensive and they look really cool. Yeah, Dietrich done good. Yep, done yeah. real good. Hey, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to move over here real quick. Look, there's a package here, DHL. It's very mysterious, uh, but, oh wow. Okay, thanks for that little flash. Okay, uh, what, what if you wanted to collect the, the older models? For, sort of, uh, for Super Dungeon Explorer? Well, all of our current range still exists on our website. It's easy to buy. Um, most distributors and retailers carry our product. Mm -hmm. um, all of the stuff is fully compatible with all of the new content that we're developing right now. So if you're already collecting Super Dungeon Explorer, you know, everything out of that Kickstarter is going to work perfectly with your existing set. Okay. And, uh, Caverns of Rock Store, everything. Absolutely. Go everything. grab it. Yep. Okay. This is a Her Starts board. Yep. Uh, who made it? Uh, one of our hobby guys uh, actually ran a Kickstarter himself, wanted to do some, some dungeon boards. And uh, yeah, no, he, he did a pretty good job just putting together something real quick and easy we can take out to shows and, uh, you know, show off some elements of the game. It's he kinda did. It's kind of fun to have little 3D pieces here and there. I'd love to see someone trapped in there. <laughs> okay. But awesome. Thanks again, John. You're very welcome.